Welcome to this rail track information film for drivers. As many of you will know, SPAD indicators are being installed at certain locations where the inadvertent passing of signals at danger, for example at the end of platforms, would pose a serious risk of conflicting movement and collision. In this programme we'll explain how these new SPAD indicators work and how you should respond to the indications given. The purpose of the SPAD indicator is to provide urgent warning that a signal has been passed at danger. It's an emergency indication and must be acted upon immediately. Let's begin by looking at the equipment. The indicator takes the form of a standard three aspect signal head which normally has all three aspects unlit. The backboard is of a reflectorized blue material. The identification plate, which bears the inscription SPAD I, also bears the identification of the signal to which it refers. In this case, DR168 signal at Dorchester South. When activated, the SPAD indicator will display flashing red aspects at top and bottom, while the center aspect will display a steady red over which the word STOP appears. The SPAD indicator will normally be placed approximately 50 metres ahead of the signal to which it applies, but may be closer if the distance to the fouling point of the junction is restricted. SPAD indicators are not fitted with signal post telephones. The SPAD indicator will be activated either by a treadle or by the track circuit, positioned immediately ahead of the signal to which it applies. Also positioned immediately ahead of the signal is an AWS magnet, which is suppressed for all signal movements. That's to say no cab indication will normally be received. You'll find full information about these SPAD indicators in the relevant weekly and periodical operating notices. This program is designed to complement the written instructions and to give you an appreciation of their actual operation. So let's begin by looking at what happens when a driver accidentally passes a platform starting signal at danger. As soon as the first wheel set passes the signal, the treadle, or in this case the track circuit, activates the operation of the SPAD indicator. At the same moment, the AWS magnet becomes active, causing the AWS warning horn to sound in the cab. The driver must make an immediate emergency brake application, bringing the train to a stand in the shortest possible distance. He must now contact the signaller, telling him that the signal has been passed at danger. This must be done by means of the signal post telephone or by the NRN cab radio. The driver will then be required to answer some questions which the signaller is obliged to ask. He must not move the train until the signaller gives permission. Now let's look at the situation where a driver is authorised to pass the signal at danger, either, as in this case, by the signaller directly or by a hand signalman. Once authority has been given, the signaller will instruct the driver to disregard the SPAD indicator. The driver then proceeds in accordance with the signaller's instructions, cancelling the AWS warning horn and passing the activated SPAD indicator.
At certain locations, such as Southampton, additional SPAD indicators will be provided to give warning to drivers of trains on opposite or adjacent lines, or on the same line in the opposite direction, that a signal has been passed at danger. This has the additional safeguard of alerting a driver to the possibility of collision resulting from another train passing a signal at danger. Some stop signals, provided with SPAD indicators, will be fitted with override plungers so that when authority is given to pass the signal at danger, the driver or hand signalman can depress the plunger to deactivate the SPAD indicator for the authorised movement. The override will be operative for that movement only. In all cases, the SPAD indicator apparatus will reset after the passage of the train. Before we remind ourselves of the main points, we need to be aware of some variations from the standard SPAD indicator installations which are currently being fitted. At Sheffield, Meadow Hall Station, a prototype SPAD indicator has been in use for some time. As we can see, the arrangement of the head is somewhat different. It's a fibre optic device and when activated displays two flashing red aspects, but with the word stop vertically in red dot matrix form. It doesn't have a blue backboard, neither is the identification plate blue. In all other respects, this SPAD indicator operates in the same way as those we've already looked at. At Leeds Station, a single ground-mounted SPAD indicator is provided for platform starting signals L137 and L138. This SPAD indicator will be activated if either of these signals is passed at danger. It has identification plates referring to both signals. Again, should the indicator become operative, drivers must stop and contact the signaller for instructions. Finally, Let's just go back over the main points as they affect drivers in their day-to-day -day job. If a SPAD indicator is displayed to you, make an emergency brake application, stop the train in the shortest possible distance and contact the signalling centre immediately. Answer the signaller's questions and carry out his instructions. Do not move the train until instructed to do so. If you're authorised to pass a signal at danger, you may proceed according to the signaller's instructions, cancelling the AWS warning provoked by the SPAD indicator magnet and ignoring the indication given by the SPAD indicator. If, in giving you authority to pass a signal at danger, the signaller instructs you to depress the override plunger, carry out this procedure to deactivate the SPAD indicator and suppress the AWS magnet before moving the train. Don't forget, failure to do this could cause the driver of another train to receive a SPAD indicator warning. SPAD indicators are part of the signalling system. Any defect, malfunction or incorrect aspect displayed to you must be reported on the driver's report form RT3185. We hope you found this short program useful in gaining an overview of the SPAD indicator and thank you for your attention.